have a session from uh, WebRoot, which is the hidden dangers of digital transformation, how to stay safe and cyber resilient. Uh, we have our two presenters, uh, David and Simon from WebRoot, and uh, I'll hand over to uh, them for their presentation. Thanks very much, guys. Um, as Matthew, Matthew mentioned, my name is David Toniazzo. I'm the ANZ uh, Channel Account Manager for OpenTex, looking after the Carbonite and WebRoot uh, business units. Uh, today, I have uh, Michael Mircheski, uh, who's our Manager and Solution Consultant for APAC. Uh, today, we'll be discussing the hidden dangers of digital transformation, how to stay safe and cyber resilient. So on the, on the agenda today, we'll talk the challenges around data loss and security, and more particularly around the cloud services uh, providers, uh, why they're not a backup solution. We'll look at our, our approach, how we see gaps and how we can resolve those, those issues that they have. Um, we'll discuss our cyber resilience uh, strategy, what that is. Uh, we'll go into our um, endpoint solutions that particularly look at the gaps that those cloud service, uh, service providers uh, do have around our endpoint uh, protection and our backups, backup Office 365 uh, solution as well. We'll have a Q&A uh, question that we need some answers and then we'll have a, uh, a prize after that. And then we'll have um, Simon do a demonstration on our Carbonite uh, endpoint protection product as well. So moving on. So be before this pandemic started, you know, organisations you know, would have uh, everyone working in the office. They would have put so many uh, security solutions in place to basically protect the perimeter of the network, the infrastructure endpoints. And then once a the pandemic uh, occurred, everyone was uh, pretty much forced to work from home. So that brought new challenges. Uh, we had, you know, organisations will have a distributed architecture, you know, being able to now worry about the home users and the solutions that they would put in place for for their at their office with these enterprise solutions, they weren't able to replicate that back for the remote workforce. So that brought a lot of vulnerabilities. Uh, we had cyber cyber criminals being able to now attack the home user, and organisations had to think about ways of actually protecting these uh, end endpoint devices protecting the critical data. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, home users now uh, basically got a lot of organisational data on these endpoints. We need to think of ways, a better way of protecting those. So over time, you know, education or uh, basically uh, organisations have some form of uh, a data breach or data loss, you know, either via a disaster, cyber attack or human error. But what we found now is a lot of these organisations, especially schools, are using cloud service providers as a form of backup, which it's not. Uh, the likes of OneDrive, Google Drive, it might be Dropbox, but there are a number of uh, cloud service providers out there, vendors, uh, that provide a syncing tool. Now, all of these uh, vendors, they've got their pros and cons of what sort of features they do have and they don't have. but just to paint the picture, a scenario that so that uh, we the content is relevant to to this conversation is we we'll pick on education for argument's sake, where they would provide Office three six five for the whole all the students and staff, but then the school will only provide Office three six five as a form of backup for their for their staff to back back up the whole office suite, but for the students they'll end up using OneDrive, and it, may, it might be something. It might be another product, but I'm just picking on OneDrive at the moment as a form of backup. Now, we see three problems with this, um, and this is where we see the gaps in these type of solutions, is number one, these service providers only guarantee the service that they provide. The data is a responsibility of the end user or the organisation. The second thing that we see as a, an issue is security. So being able to encrypt that data in flight and at rest. So the data is exposed and it's easy for cyber criminals to gain access to. The third thing is in the event of a ransom attack and we, those uh, endpoints have had a breach and the data does get encrypted, 
then the data will be replicated and also encrypted in the cell, in, in the actual cloud provider. So not not organisations are 100% um, guaranteed to uh, be safe, but we've got to think of ways how how we can back up this critical data. Now we'll see on the next slide uh, some data breaches, and especially education uh, have had a, a number of data breaches in 2019 and 2020, and the you know SMB and education are coming in under increasingly sophisticated attacks. And with digital transformation, and adoption of, of cloud services, uh, new technology, data is exploding at a rate of knots every single year. It's not going to get any less. Data will continue growing. And with data privacy laws, um, with uh, requirements and compliance, you know, businesses and education need to think of what and adjust to uh, provide uh, new backup solutions or adopt to be able to back up these critical data. So moving on to the next slide, we see with some of the data breaches, and now this is from the Notifiable uh, Data Breaches Report for 2000 and 2000 and 2019 and 2020. You can see that education are in the top five uh, industries impacted by a data breach. So you can see in the orange, we have malicious or criminal attack, human error or system fault, and, and they both are in 2019 and 2020. Uh, Human error increased by 45% year on year in the in the education sector, and also you, you see that in the health and government sector as well. So we look at our approach, where our strategy is around cyber resilience. What is cyber resilience? In a, in a nutshell, it's just basically being able to continue operating in the event of a disaster or a thought, uh, cyber threat. If a workload goes down, be able to bring that. If it's a service that goes down, being able to recover fairly quickly. So companies that have a strong cyber resilience strategy will continue to grow. Those that don't will eventually fail. So we'll look at our core framework for cyber resilience. Uh, we have our five pillars. We have backup, which is the main area that we'll be concentrating on. We have a train block protect and recover. So between Carbonite and Webroot, our Carbonite being our backup uh, offering, uh, we have a number of solutions there and Webroot. So just quickly, just to go over these uh, these uh, pillars here, oh, backup is basically is your first point of call where you must have a backup. Like what we basically, uh, I said previously with that scenario with the school, we have an Office 365 backup to back up the staff. And for those students that are using OneDrive and those potential uh, gaps that we see in that market is being able to use Carbonite Endpoint, which is a SaaS-based enterprise solution, which gives you uh, scalability, uh, security, flexibility, granular recovery to provide an automated solution for those students where we do a catch all of any documents that they work on, especially for year 12 and year year 11, year 12 students, where it's highly critical for those two years to, you know, not to lose any sort of uh, uh, work that they do during the year. So they're the two solutions that we see that will basically um, address those gaps in those type of solutions. Then we have our Carbonite server product, which is basically a looks at all the, uh, will protect all your OS and, and applications, and then so on with train block protect that, that our whole strategy we have around our uh, solution for cyber resilience. So being able to train your end users to make front of mind about uh, 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 phishing emails and all sort of stuff. We have our block, we have a DNS uh, solution, being able to protect from malicious uh, domains or IP addresses. We have an endpoint protection, which basically will stop any cyber threats from coming in and entering our network. Our recovery product is basically our carbonite availability, where we have our business continuity and also part of recovery is our backup solutions as well. And a carbonite migrate product, which will migrate any workload from on-prem to cloud or cloud to cloud. So it could be virtual or, or uh, a physical workload. So moving on. Just to give you a, a high level overview of our Carbonite uh, Office 365 solution. So we'll look at some of our differentiators. Again, this is our SaaS based solution. It's a, we have an Australian vault here. Um, 
and some of the differentiators that we have, it's the breadth of components that I'll show you in the next slide that we actually do back up. Uh, being able to, one of the key differentiators, being able to recover file permissions with uh, SharePoint is one of the key things that, that we see that we're, that we're able to do, you know, granular recovery, being able to provide your own encryption, but we do provide a 256-bit encryption. So here you can see with our slide, the breadth of components within Office 365 that we back up, which is quite uh, comprehensive. Like I said, it's an enterprise solution that we're bringing down to the small to medium market and also education. Now with Carbonite Endpoint Protection, again, this is our SaaS based solution, both protecting Windows and Mac OS. And some of the key differentiators here as well, Simon will be going into a demonstration of this product, but one of the main uh, key differentiators here is as an administrator, I can basically control via policies what I want to back up and what I can restore, or I can hand over that responsibility to the end user. They can decide either to back up what they want or, they, or what they can restore. Again, uh, with security, we do have the 256-bit encryption and we also provide your own encryption key as well. And one of the other features as well, if you know, if you're out and about and your laptop gets stolen, we're able to be able to track that device and actually wipe wipe all that critical data so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Uh, so that uh, organisational uh, secrets, whatever it may be, or critical data that we don't want in the in the wrong hands get get stolen. Okay, we've got a couple of questions we need. Um, uh, Matthew, are we able to bring those up? We got the two two questions that we need uh, answered by the audience. First poll should be up now. Yep. So the first question would be: Are you using any endpoint backup solution today? And it's just a multiple uh, choice question. Just give you fifteen minutes to answer that. 15 seconds, I should say, not 15 minutes. Do yeah, apologise. <laughs> yeah, I haven't got that much time. <laughs> and the second question, uh, do you provide backup for all your staff and students if they're using uh, Office 365 or Google Workspace? So we'll hand the prize after the that Simon uh, does his demonstration. So if you can answer those two, that's all done. Then I can hand over to Simon to uh, do a demonstration on our Carbonite endpoint protection. Right to go. Thank you, David. Uh... Okay, I'm just, just share your uh... screen. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I still haven't been given access. Oh, looks at things. Uh, you, you might need to stop your sharing, David. Ah, uh, okay, sorry, mate. No, you're right, not a problem. Okay, that's better. Okay, fantastic. Hopefully everyone can see my, uh, my screen here. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining, uh, joining uh, our event. So as, um, as David mentioned, Carbonite Endpoint uh, Backup is our comprehensive automated backup solution that will continuously back up your data, uh, regardless if it's on a uh, physical or a virtual or even a cloud uh, machine uh, running a Windows uh, Endpoint operating system or a Mac uh, OS. Uh, what I'm demonstrating here today is our um, SaaS offering cloud uh, portal. It is a multi-tenant uh, partner portal um, uh, account, which will allow you to obviously add partners, add your customers and users so you can actually back up uh, those devices. So over here to my left, we have all, um, all the quick links, all the pills that we can obviously uh, manage moving forward. So over here to the left, under home, we've got a uh, quick overview here, some reports and graphs 
on what the amount of data is that you're actually storing in your vault, in the backup vault. So as you can see here, I haven't got much, uh, much, much data. It is a fairly clean vault that I have recently started. But you can see here on the 23rd, I had a big spike of da data that I have uh, uploaded, okay? And if I scroll down here, you'll get uh, further information on the active summary that I have in my vault, uh, et cetera, okay? Um, going down to my partner here, this field will obviously give you all sorts of information uh, if you're running this as a partner portal. If you are just an end user, you, you won't see this field in your portal. But if you're a partner, you'll, you'll see all sorts of information around uh, the, the partner name, the amount of uh, customers or end users that you're potentially uh, protecting. Okay, so you can see here in my example, I have... Uh, two companies that I have actually set up in my partner portal and I have a total of one user and five devices that I am currently uh, backing up, okay? Uh, at the bottom here, you can see some uh, email uh, templates that I essentially have. Uh, these are all configurable. Uh, by default, uh, the purpose of these templates are when you add companies and users for an email to be sent out to that particular person, giving them a welcome uh, email and information on how to set up their or start up their trial or their backup to their, uh, to their device. Over here, just very quickly, uh, we have uh, standard policies that we can adopt. We can also create our own policies. Uh, now, what is a policy? A policy is all about how we would like to manage that end user. We've got two main um, ways here on how we can manage users is we can select centrally managed by administrator or self-managed by end users. If we select, if we leave centrally managed by administrator, you will have, you will be in control as an administrator or an MSP to select which directories or file structures that end user or that laptop uh, can back up and restore. If you would like to give full ownership to the end user, to that agent, we can select self-managed uh, self managed end users where that will uh, allow the end user to set up their own backups and manage that moving forward. And just to give you a quick uh, uh, overview on some of the options that we have here is by default, we will back up that device every 15 minutes. We can dr drop that down to uh, every minute, hourly or even daily if we, if we wanted to do so. The other option we have here is we can actually set up a backup schedule. So if you didn't want to back up this on a frequent interval, we can schedule that to back up once a day, if that's something that we wanted to do. And moving across here to, uh, to companies, um, here is the uh, company structure of all the companies that I'm currently running. So you can see here, I have two. I have one called Simon underscore new, uh, which essentially has one, uh, one user, and that one user has five devices that I'm currently backing up. And the total amount of uh, data that I've actually consumed in my backend vault is just under 60, 60 gig and that state, that company state is active. The one here at the top, A1, that is a trial that I'm running and that is actually telling you that there is a trial with no users that are currently being backed up. If we wanted to add a new company, uh, all we really need to do is click on add company and really just fo fo um, follow the details here into, into the appropriate fields. One thing that I would like to highlight is trial company. So by default, we will allow, when you add uh, a company, we will allow you to start a 30-day full trial um, that will allow you to back up uh, any ind individual devices that are associated to that, uh, to that company. And of course, you've got the ability to select which policy you would like to add that company to. Okay, moving forward to the users. So these are the users that I have running. So you can see here I have one user, Simon. And as I mentioned earlier, there is a total of five devices. And out of those five devices, I have two devices that I have actually activated and a total of 60, uh, 60 gig. To add a user, I can simply click on add user and that will allow me to add uh, an additional user, okay? Um, I can click on the uh, user field here and that will give me uh, all sorts of uh, information on that appropriate user. I can edit the user details, change them, modify them as, 
as required. I can reset passwords from here. I can do all that kind of stuff. Um, over to devices. So these are the devices that I that I'm currently uh, that, that are currently active or currently in backup for that particular user. So as I mentioned earlier, I have two uh, two devices that have been activated: my endpoint and my host backup. So you can see here my last backup for endpoint. Uh, ran uh, uh, yesterday and uh, I haven't ran this backup for quite some time okay but if I go here and click on endpoint um, we can actually have a look and and see how that device is actually uh, configured so over here very quickly uh, this is all the information that I have for that uh, for that device so you can see the amount of um, uh, storage capacity the type of operating system I'm running uh, and, and all other relevant information. Under managed device, we have, uh, we have all sorts of um, uh, cool features here on what we can do in the unlikely event of a data breach or loss of physical device. We can uh, set a poison pill where we can delete all that data of that remote location if the, uh, the device such as a laptop has been stolen or mis misplaced, okay? Uh, we also can run a restore from the admin portal. So if you're looking at a central managed uh, policy where you weren't giving your end user the ability to restore data themselves, you can have full control and run the restores from here. Okay. We also have location uh, management where we can actually track, uh, track uh, that device uh, in, in, in the unlikely event if it has been uh, stolen. Okay, um, I'll stop there with the admin portal because we're running out of time, I believe. I'll quickly show you guys what the, um, the agent uh, looks like. So switching, switching uh, screens here, just bear with me. Okay, so this is essentially the um, Carbonite agent uh, portal that is loaded on the device that you're protecting. So we have three fields, we've got the home field, which will essentially give you all sorts of information on the recent activity. So you can see I've done a recent restore and these are my protected items. If I click on protect, uh, I can actually select the uh, directories or the type of documents that I'm looking at protecting. Over here, I have set my custom. So if I click on edit, you can see my custom locations that I am protecting only, which is C backup and, and so forth. I can also uh, go ahead and select the customized um, location. So for example, if I select documents, I can click on edit, and these are the file extensions that I um, that will automatically be backed up. That is on all my in internal uh, volumes. To show you guys a very quick restore, I can click on restore, and um, it will essentially give me all the volumes I'm currently backing up. If you're looking at restoring uh, data that has been deleted, make sure you do select that checkbox here to include deleted files. And all we really need to do is just browse uh, that, that C volume and select the, um, the particular uh, structure or, or, or document that um, I'm looking at restoring. So I'm just looking at something quite small here to restore. So I'll go ahead and select uh, those two uh, directories there to restore. Um, I can restore uh, from a previous retention. By default, it will do the latest backup, but I can go back and select any particular month or year and restore that data from that vault. I'll go ahead and click on next. And I've got the option of restoring the data to a new location or the original uh, location. So I'll go ahead and browse my location and I'll go ahead and, uh, and um, select a new location here. I'll just quickly select backup and I'll click on OK. And I'll simply click on restore. And that will start the restore process. Okay. And I'll inform me that two files have been restored. I can click on details and uh, that will show me uh, the location of that, uh, of that restore. So I will I will stop I will stop there. That was just a very quick high level overview of the um, uh, of the product. Um, David, back to you. I think we can open up for questions if we have time.
David, you're on mute. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, so if there's any questions, guys, put them on the chat. On Q&A here. Uh, we've got a question here, Simon. Is that remote wipe th through an agent or through something like computer trace LoJack? I think it is the question. Uh, you're in mute. Uh, no, uh, so yeah, good, good question. That, uh, that remote wipe and all the uh, additional fields there that I quickly demonstrated is done via the Carbonite endpoint agent that is loaded on the uh, machine that you're looking at uh, uh, backing up or protecting. Good question. Uh, question for you, uh, Simon. Uh, is it, is it uh, Active Directory integrated? Uh, yes, yes, good question. So we are fully um, uh, Active Directory integrated. So we have MSI uh, packages where you can auto deploy the agent on multiple um, PCs within within the domain, uh, we do we do have fully we, we do have the ability to fully integrate with Active Directory. Um, uh, obviously, group group policy. We run uh, LDAP also, uh, and we also do have the option to enable single sign on. Great question. Okay. Um, there's no other questions coming up at the moment. Okay, guys. Well, look. Thanks very much for that. Um, Interesting for, for myself, uh, you know, having a long background, obviously, in Windows environments and a um, lot, of, lot of the larger customers out there and some of the education customers out there will certainly, uh, I think, um, relate to this exact product where uh, if you're coming from a large Microsoft environment, you'll have had um, the classic folder redirection and roaming profiles. And lots of sysadmins have sat down and spent a lot of time trying to capture all of the data off the machine harvest it off endpoints and store it on a corporate server, and then we back up um, the corporate server. So that's effectively how we sort of used to manage um, critical endpoint data. But as we'd all know, uh, two, two things would be the problem. Users uh, would always like to install their important documents, the thesis that they've been working on for six months and their only copy of that document in the recycling bin for some reason. Okay, we've all seen end users do crazy things. So it didn't matter how good we were at trying to grab every folder off, a, um, off an end user, off an, off an end point. Uh, end users always found a way of storing important documents in places that we weren't uh, redirecting or backing up effectively. And, uh, and the other side of that, of course, is um, you'd also come across, uh, you're a Microsoft shop, everyone's on Active Directory, everyone's on a Windows device, except for some privileged executives who would always go out and buy an <laughs> Apple Mac. Okay, and of course this doesn't work in your Microsoft environment. So it's really great to see a product, an endpoint backup solution, um, because certainly for myself, if I was, um, uh, you know, uh, wanted 100% confidence that my company data is backed up, I can obviously go get a product like that, put it on all of my endpoints, end both, um, you know, sort of uh, Windows and Mac orientated. And certainly my level of confidence will go up greatly now knowing that I can set at a per device level uh, what I want backed up. What's a really other, a really great other feature there that um, I see creeping into the market as well, um, certainly in the education space, is this need to be able to track devices. So that uh, location component is really, really good. So for schools that still have um, uh, college owned or school owned um, laptop uh, programs, um, having that capability, I think, is really good as well. So lots of schools are on bring your own and they won't be worried about that as such. But having that built in, not a separate standalone endpoint product, but built into a backup solution uh, is a great feature as well. So that's, um, that's a fantastic uh, presentation. I think it'd be very applicable to lots of our customers out there today. So thanks very much, Simon and Dave, for your presentation.